Starbucks, the world's largest purveyor of coffee, came out with earnings last night. Now, this company has had a rough year, shares down as much as 25%. However, the company's earnings report has investors excited with shares trading up by as much as 5%. Does this mean that Starbucks is out of the woods? What does it mean for investors over the long term? We'll spend the next 10 minutes trying to figure that out. My name is Brian Stoffel. At the time of this recording, I do not own shares of Starbucks, and I want to give a shout out to finchat.io for sponsoring today's video. You're going to hear a whole bunch from them in just a minute. So this was Starbucks' fiscal third quarter of fiscal 2024. That's confusing, I know, but it's their third quarter, and it's roughly an $86 billion company, depending on where it opens this morning. Now, this was an ugly quarter by any way of looking at it. And much of the fall associated this with, with this happened in the previous quarter. Revenue was down 1%. That missed analyst expectations. And the revenue guidance for low single digits growth obviously missed as well. Earnings per share fell 7%, but they actually met analyst estimates. And management guided for flat to low single digit comparable store sales declines. I would say it was roughly on the edge of that, maybe a miss, maybe a meet, depending on what flat to low single digit decline means to you. Let's look at margins. The company's gross margins, and I'll show you how I calculated that. They contracted, which is not a good sign. Operating margins were down, which is not a good sign. Net margins were down. Free cash flow was still positive, but down, as was net income. And this balance sheet is very debt heavy, which is not surprising, given the build out that the company is still doing and the reliability of its free cash flow, even during difficult times. Now, let's go down the income statement to see what was at play here. So first, we start off with the simple fact that total revenues were down 1% on the year. Now, this is what I include in cost of goods sold. It's the product and distribution costs and the operating expenses for a store. On the whole, those were flat, which is actually not that bad. But even if you're flat, when you have a drop in revenue, because it didn't drop more than revenue, that is what affected the company's gross margins. All the other operating expenses were actually up 1%. So overall, Truth be told, Starbucks did a pretty good job of controlling their costs given what was going on here. However, it still wasn't enough. Uh, and that's why operating income fell 4% and earnings net income fell 8%. It is worth noting that the weighted average shares outstanding was down 1.3%, which is a good news for shareholders. So what else happened during the quarter that's worth noting? Let's for that, head on over to finchat.io. This is a tool that you can use for free by clicking on the link in the show notes below. And if you want full functionality, which I'm gonna show you in just a second, you'll get a 15% discount on your subscription by using that link. So I head on over to FinChat. I type in the ticker symbol, which is S-B-U-X. This comes up and what I wanna show you is, is my favorite tab in this by far is this one right here, segments and KPIs. And it shows a whole bunch of things like, beverage and food revenue, geographic revenue, um, where their earnings before interest and taxes come from. But the thing that I'm really want, want to point out is first, it's worth pointing out that the number of stores has grown and revenue is still down. That's just a sign of, of how rough things are. But I'm going to go to the quarterly view here and I'm going to pull up the only two things which I think are super important. The first is the growth in comparable store transactions. Now, what does this mean? Any company, especially restaurant or food uh, location, can grow its revenue by simply growing the number of locations that it has. But that doesn't really speak to any underlying strength that the company might have. Growing the number of transactions within a location that already existed, that is a true sign of strength. So comparable store sales, it discounts all those new stores and just says within the group of existing stores, how did things change? And there's two parts to it, the number of transactions that take place and the amount that is paid per transaction. The number of transactions that took place you see right here actually fell 5% year over year. 
Now, this is relatively new for the company. If we go back to the annual view, uh, what I'll show you here is that it did dip in 2018 ever so slightly. I don't count COVID right here, but the fact that it is now been negative for two consecutive quarters, that's not a great sign. So that tells you something about the popularity of the brand. It's, it's losing some right here. Now, the other one that I wanna pull up is the average ticket growth, the average ticket growth. So I'll, I'll hide this first one. And what this shows is Starbucks ability to pass on, in this case, inflationary costs to its customers. And what we see is that there has been ticket growth of 2%. Unfortunately for the company and shareholders, when you get a 2% jump in how much people are paying for an average transaction, but the total number of transactions was down 5%, you get comparable store sales going down 3%. Now the company did add a little bit more color to that as well. In North America, transactions were down 6%. So that's 6% fewer times things are being rung up on the register, but those things that were rung up, the average price was 3% higher. Internationally, the, uh, the average ticket was down 4% and the number of transactions was down 3%, so a 7% drop in comparable store sales. And where things got really ugly was in China, where there was a 7% drop in the number of transactions and a 7% drop in the average ticket price. So by, by and large, this was not good. Now the company did say that it saw those trends improving moving forward, but didn't give a whole lot of numerical guidance for the current quarter and for the end of the fiscal year. For what it's worth, Wall Street is expecting 2% top line growth and, and pretty much even bottom line for the full year, 2% top line growth. And again, more or less even for the full year. Now the management talked up a whole bunch about what was going on. They also said that they've had positive interactions with some activist investors who've gotten on board and wanna shake things up a little bit, help the company refocus. What should you watch moving forward? Well, first are those comparable store sales, particularly the number of transactions happening and the fact that that's fallen, I find that alarming. The company can only raise prices so much. If the number of customers coming in is trending downward, that's not good. Now they did call out that Starbucks rewards customers were healthy. It's the number of people coming in who were not Starbucks rewards customers. But again, I'm not so sure that's a great sign. I'm glad they're holding on to the customers that are most important to them, but they're not getting as many new customers to come in. Number two, I keep an eye on China because China is a very important part of this story and the results were not pretty for the quarter. Number three, keep an eye on gross margins. And that's also kind of goes hand in hand with the average ticket the, the average uh, price for a ticket item, because if the company's gross margins are falling, that shows you that all those local independent stores, not to mention Dunkin' Donuts, Pete's Coffee, Caribou, whatever, whatever there might be, Luckin Coffee in China, they are competitively pressuring Starbucks to the point where they have to cut back on prices, which is hurting their profitability, and finally keep an eye on free cash flow. Overall, I'd say the mode is stable to narrowing. And this is definitely a yellow flag because look, when the number of transactions happening in your stores is falling, that's just not a good sign on a comparable basis. It doesn't mean that they can't turn this ship, but it also doesn't mean that you should just blindly assume that things will naturally get better. When I run through this through my anti-fragile framework, it gets a seven. But of course, the last piece of that is valuation. So if we look at valuation, we head back on over to finchat.io. We type in Starbucks. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how you can look this up really quickly. You can click on ratios and we can look at trailing valuation. We can look at the price to earnings. We can look at the price to free cash flow. And then we can also look at forward valuation because the stock's trading up today in anticipation of things likely getting better in the future. So we can look at that as well. And then we can come up here and just say, okay, where is the company right now? So we'll start out and we look at the company's PE ratio of 21, which is 
pretty reasonable, all things considered. There was some weird COVID stuff that happened here. Uh, there was some weird joint venture stuff that happened here. Um, but 21 is actually lower than where it's been historically. So on that basis, it might look a little bit appealing. If we look at the price to free cash flow of about 21, it's much the same story. What about on a forward basis? Well, over the next 12 months, the company is trading for about 20, 21 times earnings. And if we look at free cash flow, we get a price to free cash flow of about 23. Um, and so we look at those. I'm not even going to do a reverse discounted cash flow analysis because I, I think that this company is largely optimized for this. So the, the takeaway story when it comes to Starbucks is simply this. Its valuation is fairly reasonable right now. And if it is able to turn the corner, I can see why the stock is trading up. However, however, the company needs to prove that it has a moat. It's proven that over the past couple of decades. So I, all things being equal, I would say that they can probably write this ship. At the same time, they're not invincible. The number of transactions going down, the threat of not being able to pass on price increases to customers. And most of all, I'm glad that they're hanging on to their existing Starbucks reward customers and getting them to come back. But if new people aren't entering the stores, that could be a problem as well. So that might explain why it's trading at such a reasonable valuation. So what will I be doing in my own personal portfolio? Well, I'm about to launch a service where you could see just that. Now, the service is called Stock Investing Mentor, and it launches on September 1st. So yes, if you become a member of this service, you will get full access to my portfolio, all my buys, sells, trims, and ads that I make in my portfolio, as well as explanations of them. But, and this is really important, you will also get an hour of weekly live training sessions where I'm going to be teaching a different nugget about investing every week throughout the year. And then you will also have times to ask questions and have them answered live and in real time. Of course, all of this is recorded. And there's a private online investing community where you can ask and answer questions. If you are interested in that, again, it'll be launching in September. Click the second link in the show notes, enter your email, you'll be on the wait list. And most importantly, have access to our largest possible discounts for when this does launch in September. So what did you think of Starbucks quarter? Is this company turning the corner or is today's pump bump more of a facade, more of a mirage than something that shareholders should really get excited about? Make sure that you subscribe to the channel to keep up on Starbucks when it reports in 90 days. And until then, Brian.